Parcero, parcero, parcero. Welcome to the Parcero's Take, episode 22. I am El Parcero Ron with me, El Parcero Dani. Parceros, parceros. Take is a space, everything, a space in our Parcero United community dedicated to La Selección Colombia and everything having to do with it. Guys, thank you for tuning in with much um, nervios por tener un crack, verdadero crack en nuestro stream for, for the first time, uh, Juan Casilla, special guest, eh, mundialista, colombo-americano. Calidoso, eh, calidoso, que la pone a tocar. Eh, Luca Modric, colombiano, sí. un aplauso para Juan Casilla, muchachos. Welcome, bro, welcome, welcome bro. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Uh, no, thank you for helping on, man. I know you're busy um, scoring, er, assisting for La Selección and then coming back yeah. and scoring for for the Houston Dynamo too. So it's it's been a busy past couple couple weeks for you. Thank you for taking the time, man. And uh, no, we really appreciate it. I know our followers do because uh, most of our following is Colombian American. Mm -hmm. So um, it's dope to have you on. And I know a lot of people can, can relate to you. Yeah, I'm excited to be on. Gracias, bro. Eh, bro, so let's get started, bro. Um, I guess we can start at the at the very origin of your story. Actually, even before that, kind of like the background of your family. I know they're from Cali, and you were also born in Cali. Is that correct? Yes. No, no. Eh, I know El Pastor Dani. Yo también soy de Cali. Yo también soy de Cali. And I'm going to have to, like, you know what I mean? I'm going to have to, you know, point out the elephant in the room. ¿Vos sos de Cali o de la América? But I can't say. I good. Say no. <laughs> good, good, good. I like him. I like, see, but uh, just in case, like, you know, I, I got you, bro. I got you. Estamos bien. Estamos en la buena. Estamos en la buena. Que bien, pa. Que bien. Ya sabemos. Right. Right. El, 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 el Cali. El man es del Cali. We're not closing doors out here. We're not closing doors out here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but your, fam your family, traditionally, are they are they green or, or red? Or, in, or you prefer not to say? Bro, uh, I feel like this could start something. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 mentira, bro. No, we're not putting you on spot. Sí, sí, oh, sí. So, born in Cali, you came at what age to the United States? Uh, when I was two. At two, oh, really? and Very what young. is your... What straight is your to Houston? You went straight to Houston? Yeah, to Houston. To Houston and... Um, you you joined the academy at, at what age? Um, so before they had like a pre academy, and I joined that when I was seven years old, and then academy like started probably like U U twelve. That was when it was like DA. Um, so I what? I joined when I was seven, but yes, I've been there for a while. But would you say like you were always into soccer like from that age? Um, yeah. Like it's like did you look at any other sports or just kind of like through your family or through Colombia? Like how how did that come about? Yeah, no, so my dad played soccer his whole life, and uh, just I'm Colombian, so soccer is the main sport over there. And and he always he always like had a ball with me. He, he kind of introduced me to the game, and and I liked it. So I never really. I never really looked at any other sports like that. I always, always had a love for soccer. Well, uh, I, I read, you know, he was your first coach. Um, so did it was El Cucho hard on you, or was he kind of like laid back, or um, how, how was he? No, I mean, I guess he was he was tough on me. Like he he expected a lot from me, and and looking back, like I'm I'm grateful for that. You know, he. He always pushed me and and like at the time you know you're just like oh like why is he why is he pushing me so hard or why uh but now I'm, i'm i'm really grateful for for all the times that that he he let me know what i was doing wrong what i was doing well and and he always uh helped me and i think that's a he has a really big part in, in my career do it on and so around age so you're 12 so you're like Around 10 years old, you were, you were in Houston. I know you spent some time in Spain as well. Yeah. Uh, Valencia, right? Mm -hmm. in, in Valencia, I played for a team called Alboraya. And basically, I played in, in like the Spanish league for, for my age. And I got to play against like all the La Liga teams in, in my region. 
Duro. And what do you think is like the biggest difference in like the level in Spain at that age group compared to, I know you spent some time also in Columbus and, and obviously Houston. What do you think is like the big difference at that age? Um, you know, I think it was just like the competitiveness. Uh, I came from playing in like DA soccer with Dynamo and we were probably the better, one of the better teams in, in our conference. Like it was just us and maybe FC Dallas. Um, and then the other teams, like it was, it was a bit easier. Um, but in Spain, you know, like over there, you have a proper league format, just like La Liga. Um, and like the most important thing was three points. Like mm-hmm. especially since I wasn't in like a, a La Liga academy, um, it was it was really just about winning for us to keep getting higher and higher in the standings. Um, so that that taught me a lot going from from being one of the better teams to going to Spain and knowing that there are teams that are going to be better than us and having to having to fight every weekend to to get three points. Um, I think I think that was like one of the bigger differences and just like the amount of teams there are. There's so many teams on like every block. There's a different club with mm-hmm. high level players, um, and it's just it's just really condensed and. And yeah, every 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 weekend was was a battle. I don't remember, I maybe like one or two easy games in the league that I that I played that year. And were they mostly like, a, I know you played mostly against like Spaniards, but did you see like any other Colombians or Americans out there in, in Spain in your age group? Uh, it's funny because I played against Luis Quintero um, when he was at Gelme. Uh, before he was even at Villarreal, mm-hmm. and uh, in the when we had camp in Spain, uh, he, he was talking about the league, and I was like, "Oh, you play for Kelman?" And like we we pulled up the video, and we saw each other play. Yeah, so. ah, qué duro, qué duro. Off the field, I want to question. I want to ask off the field culturally, how was it? Was it very different? Were you with your parents? Where uh, were you just over there by yourself? No, so my parents have always lived in Houston. Um, so over there, I was in like a, a academy uh, that housed like international players. Um, they would give us like additional training in the morning and then uh, let us go to school or give us like education. And then in the afternoons, everyone would go to their separate club. So I was living with people from everywhere, from all ages. Um, and I would train with them in the morning, go to school, and then in the afternoon I would go uh, train with Alboraya. Bro, um, we we like to kind of stalk our guests. You're not the first one, <laughs> but we found a, a old picture of you, uh, bro, with el bicho, bro. We can go, okay. yeah. Nivel, bro. Con razón yeah. salió crack. <laughs> and you, yeah, got yeah, you, were, you, you had the rub, you had the rub, you had the rub on him. A little bit, I see that. So, so were you, were you, were you, so you're a Real Madrid fan over Barca? Yeah, yeah, I'm a Real Madrid fan. I, as you can see, I'm the one that makes the controversial. You know what I mean? So, does that mean of obviously Cristiano or Messi? No, yeah, Ronaldo. Ronaldo is my idol. Uh, always gonna pick Ronaldo. La oh, madre. Real, real quick, what do you think about Messi to to Inter Miami? Are you looking forward to to playing against him? Yeah, I, I think that's like. Obviously, I think with the way MLS has been growing in the past few years, one big name like that was, it was just bound to happen. And I mean, for it to be messy is, is crazy, but uh, I think I think it's only good for the league. And yeah, it's, you want to play against the best players and it doesn't really get better than that. Okay, so from Houston to Spain and then you spent some, uh, how long in, in Columbus? I just spent a season in Columbus, my U15 year. And then from there, you uh, went back to Houston, right? Yeah. And that was when you when you signed your your first uh, first contract with them. Right. Uh, how was that moment when you received the news, or where were you? How did your parents receive it? Um, overall, what what do you what did you feel in that moment? Yeah. So I had my I was in my room like playing Fortnite. This was during lockdown. <laughs> Uh, so I was just playing Fortnite with the boys and my dad called me 
and like I didn't want to pause it. But he was like, he came in and he looked pretty serious. So I was like, yeah. So I had to leave the game. And I went to like his office. And like, it was like a Zoom call with like the head coach, the GM, and the academy director. Te tiro al agua. Yeah. So I just like sat there. I was like, oh, I'm either in trouble or something is bad. <laughs> um, and yeah, they just told me like that uh, they liked the way I've been playing. I, I had done my first preseason with the first team. And they they said that they liked the way I did and and that they saw potential in me and they wanted to offer me a contract and you know it's it's kind of hard to like describe the feeling I had but it was kind of just a, a nice moment to share with my family you know it's something that I've worked for and that they've put in a lot of time uh, for me to you know accomplish my goals and it was just like really really special to share that with them. Okay, well, um, so you for the for the twosie play the eight, correct? For the second team. It's for the second yeah. team, you play eight, or what is your preferred position when you when you play for Houston? Um, I like playing the eight. I like playing like box to box. Um, but right now for the second team, I've been playing six. I played six like all last year, and and then like in with Colombia, they started putting me at the eight. And I had always grown up playing the eight. Um, and, you know, it was, I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. But for now, with the second team, I'm playing the six. Um, but as long as so I'm how, how would you, dis if you were to describe your playing style in, in three words, what, what adjectives would you use? Mm, I would say composed. Um, this is three words, but box to box. Okay, not well. Yeah. Technically, with the with the colon, it's one word. Yeah, so. yeah it's together. Okay. And finesse. Finesse, bro. For me, like out of the the midfielders in in Colombia, and this is getting ahead, but like, bro, you're like one of the most or the most technical players out there Very. in terms of knowing when to switch the play, knowing when to keep keep the momentum, when to give the team pauses. And I don't, I, that's that's something that is like way ahead of your age and for what what I think. Mm -hmm. Um do you attribute that like learning learning that in, in Spain? I know they're very technical in Spain. Mm -hmm. Or is that something you just you've just learned throughout your career? Um I think I think it's um, all the all the places I've been, I I picked up a lot of different playing styles, uh, a lot of different things that I've learned uh, over the the teams that I've played in, the leagues that I've played in, and I think most of it is because I growing up I was normally the smallest on the team, and I'm not not that fast, I'm not that strong, um, so I think I had to learn how to play to to my strengths. And that's with, with making the right decision whenever the ball was at my feet to to you know use it in my advantage because I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna beat anyone physically so I had to had to learn how to how to control the game uh, without having to, to move that much and and I think over time I got I got used to like you know making the right decision uh, choosing the right time to slow it down when to speed it up and mm -hmm. and I think. Just all, all those things added up and have made me like the player I am today and the characteristics I have in my game now. Yeah, something I noticed about your game is very interesting that you have the garra over six, but at the same way, you don't give up the ball or, or you don't give up, you know, for 50 50 and you, you're not afraid to like slide tackle, get dirty. But at the same time, this, the moment you receive and you turn, you also have the vision to either slow the game down, make an easy pass wide, or like, make that you know um pa like assist to you know to arriesgar yeah. and become like a you know kind of like a uh si arriesgar y para hacer un gol. something i noticed about that your, your playing style yeah i think like i said the uh, last year with the second team i played six uh the whole year and with colombia they put me at eight so i had practice of like that defensive work um winning the winning the duels so I think it just 
complemented my game in, in the sense that I could go, I could do well going forward on the ball, and I had that defensive part as well. Yeah, you attribute your game to, you know, um, all the experiences you, you've had. Uh, one thing I noticed is that you've played with Car uh, Carlos Darwin, Quintero, in, in Houston. Yeah. Also, Hector Herrera now, who's down there. Two, like, very uh, talented midfielders. Um, two midfielders that have a long trajectory, long career. Uh, how's, how was playing with uh, Carlos Darwin? Uh, Darwin was just like, you just don't know what he's going to do. Uh, he's, he's unpredictable. And, and you know, it was, it was really fun uh, to, to learn from him, to, to see him play, to become friends with him. Uh, and, and yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's, like, it's pretty self-explanatory. Like, the scientifico del gol, you know. Like, you just <laughs> never know. He can, he can make a play out of nowhere. He can take a shot off from nothing. And, and yeah, it's... He's he's different. And the best player in the in the league in Colombia right now. Yeah. Yeah, he's okay. killing in America. Salve to la gente de chat, Andy Fut Bisimo, que si que no sé. Parcero eh if you keep that home mentality, you go sugar for. Is there any player you idolize or emulate your game after? I know we compare you a lot to Luka uh, Luka Modric. Mm -hmm. Is he someone that that you like or you emulate your game after? Uh, yeah, obviously I'm a Madrid fan, so Modric to me is, is one of the goats. Um, yeah, I, I think I like a lot of players playing style, even like in Colombia, Mateus Uribe. Um, oh, yeah. Box to box. You know, yeah, like I like Kroos, Modric. Um, there's just like a lot of players that, that I, I really enjoyed their – their play style, I enjoy learning from them and watching them. Uh, I couldn't really tell you one that I'm like, oh, like I want to yeah. play like him. Growing up, I wanted to play Ronaldo, but I don't have I don't have those traits. Um, but yeah, I think just watching, I, I like watching a lot of soccer and just watching, you know, Rodri from City, just a lot of like top class players that that I try to get uh, little bits and pieces from. Like low key, like sometimes when you're receiving the middle and you kind of do your little turn, um, to uh, para esquivar el, el, the defender, you kind of look like Diago Alcantara, like that little, yeah, you know, a little swag with the, the little swag, yeah, with the little fame with the swag. But all right, moving forward, so you landed uh in Columbus, uh, and you you went from Columbus to back to Houston. You signed your deal. Um, tell us about the experience about you getting looked at with the uh with the young U.S. team? Uh, so I got my first call up when I was in Columbus, um, my U15 year. Mm -hmm. And that that's kind of what started the whole return to Dynamo thing. Um, Interesting. And then, but I have a, I have my green card. So I'm not a U.S. citizen yet. Uh, I should be getting it later this year. Um, but basically they started calling me back up last year. Um, because my U15 year, we were going to go a tournament to Italy. And then that's when they found out my whole situation and how I didn't have a passport yet. Um, but they've always, like, kept tabs on me. And since they knew I was getting it uh, this year, they started calling me back up last year. And, you know, I've always – I only have good things to say about, about the U.S., uh, about their, their system, everything, everything that goes into that organization. Uh, and, you know, they've always treated me well. I've always enjoyed all the camps that I've been to. I've played with a lot of great players. And and just those types of experiences are just things that keep adding on to, to my career, to my play style, uh, where I'm just continuously, like, learning from, from all these different places and ultimately have, like, brought me to, to the level that I am today. And, and they give me confidence, you know, whenever I go to Colombia, to say that, okay, like, I know how the national team works. I know um, what it takes to be here. Um, like, U.S. gave me that experience, you know. Do you, do, do you, does the Federation still keep up with you? Like, you still have communication with them? Uh, not recently, but I think after Sudamericano, I got, yeah. you know, I capitalized, so it kind of just... Oh, I got you. Um, so, 
So U.S. Uh, to Colombia is a is a big switch. I bet for you and your family. I know soccer is a much bigger deal in in Colombia than it is in the U.S. Um, what was that moment when you got your your first call up to the to the U twenties? Um, what did your parent? What did your dad think about it? Does he have a preference for who you play for? No, I mean, my dad's Colombian. <laughs> I think. No, pero no es como que, okay, con tal de que juegue el niño, la, 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 or like, he wants, like, he's kind of like, yo. No, I, I mean, I think my parents just want me to, to be happy, you know, um, whether that's playing for U.S. or Colombia. But, like, I know deep down that um, the feeling they have for Colombia is, is, is closer to the heart, you know. Um, but they're still proud of me no matter who I play for. They're still proud if I play for the U.S. or, or Colombia. Um But but yeah, when I first got my my U20 call up, you know, it was I had been, well, we had been trying to reach out to federation. And, you know, they had been watching me my whole second team season, and I was having a good season. And I was just like, oh, I wonder if they're gonna call me up. Like uh, like when it, when is it gonna happen? And eventually it, it came, and and like just another one of those moments where where I just felt so proud uh so happy for for myself for my family and and yeah like I, that was an amazing experience my first camp and now now i'm i have sud americano world cup and Mundialista. and if you tell me that i would have that maybe like six months ago i just i wouldn't believe you so i'm i'm really grateful and and blessed to to be where i am right now How was that experience playing as Dominicano in Colombia? Bro, you played it. You played. You played in Cali, where your whole family's from. Did yeah. they, they? Obviously, they went to the stadium and saw you. How was that? Bro, it was so sick. Like I, probably the best experience of my life. You know, like just just going out and and like I went into that tournament not really knowing what my role was going to be, like how many minutes I should expect. Uh, you know, I was just going to to like be be a good be a good teammate uh help the team whenever i had to and and i ended up starting for four of the nine games and starting three in in cali in front of my family so it was it was really it was really nice and and like like my family would send me pictures of them like all at someone's apartment everyone together like right before they were heading to my game and yeah everyone wearing number 13 it's just One of those things that like you can't really describe and, and like just, playing in yeah, Pascual Guerrero. Yeah, in Pascual and in el Pascual. Um, no, I get you, bro. I like yeah. even the Sudamericano. Like it's a huge deal in Colombia, man. Like I was there in in February in, mm. in Bogota, and I, I went to I went to see you in um, against the game in against Uruguay. Mm -hmm. And even when we got in the Uber, like the Uber was right, like he he was into the game, like he knew what was going on. Like the his radio had the lineups reading out. Like everyone was paying attention. Uh, do you think the 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 games in Bogota were the best? Was the best atmosphere you ever played in? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I don't. The I don't... game I went to was intense, man. Yeah, like it was crazy. It was crazy. The stadium was packed. I think they sold out every every game you guys played in in Bogota, yeah. which was yeah, yeah. insane. And um, not Keuro. So it is is that's the best atmosphere you've ever played in? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. so. I, I know hey. you mentioned. Um, I know you mentioned the weight of La Tricolora on on your family, but as for you, did you feel any different? I know you you have. You know, you're you were born in Colombia, but you also identify yourself, you know, as an American here. So, how did you feel? That it's no, really different. It, yeah, it's different. Yeah, I grew up, I grew up pretty much supporting Colombia always. You know, I my memories of of getting together and watching game with my family are, are to watch Colombia. Um, you know, I have the 2018 World Cup, 2014 World Cup, Copa America, like. I I have all all those memories of of me just just watching La Selección like James Cuadrado like that so to be able to be in that position where now I'm the one that's representing all the little kids and all the families you know 
it was it was special because I was I was once in those shoes like just looking at, at La Selección and and just thinking like wow these these you're guys follow, are, you're following a big name's footsteps yeah so so yeah it's a it's a different feeling um and both both feelings are good but you know it's 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 more it's a bit it's a bit more special just because of of me growing up and and always having like the the selection games on and and yeah, just <laughs> i know you i know you mentioned the world cup which what, what what's your kind of like first kind of memory watching the, the world cup like what sticks out of like a world cup in general in gen in general in general um, I remember it was, I don't remember what year it was. It was probably 2010. Um, but when uh, the guy from Uruguay, I think. Forlan. Diego. Uh, Diego oh, the loco. Did, oh, snap. Abreu. With, with Ghana. The game with I just Ghana. remember that, that PK where he just chipped it. Um, yeah, that was insane. Bro, I have a lot of memories of the World Cup. You know, I, I watched the 2014 World Cup in Colombia. And that was my one of my first times going back to to visit, and it was just like crazy because here you know how soccer is, and and just going back and just seeing how literally the whole country stops whenever Colombia is playing. Um, and yeah, I had I watched the James goal against Uruguay. You know, it was those those moments like really really stick out to me because that was like the first time I really pude vivir el fútbol like the way that Colombian people live, you know? Bro, real quick, top three historical national team players. We have Columbia. to ask. We have to ask. I mean, I think just James, Falcao. I didn't watch him, but just because of his greatness, his El Pibe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my top three. And Danny, what are your top three? I think he puts I think I'm a little three. older, so I, I, yeah. My Fatino Speech is my favorite player of all time. I met him when I was young. You know, I'm a little older. So I, I have El Pibe, uh, Faustino, and then uh, then after that, I got James and Falcao. Just because, like, me mm -hmm. growing up, you know, my reference, like, you know, I fell in love with the game with, with El Pibe and Faustino. I had to. Um, so, Suramericano, you went from uh, substitute to starter, um, from more to less, uh, played a hell of a tournament. Um, and then comes the World Cup. Uh, you were expected to be called up. You were called up second youngest player in the in the squad. Um, what it, what sensations did you feel uh, when you finally saw that list and saw your name on on the list? Well, honestly, it's like a lot of it was like relief, like like okay, all the work like it it paid off, you know, because in those in those uh, final days you know it's like oh the list is gonna come out like you're you're just praying you're you're hoping that you're gonna be in it um so i think first thing was just like relief and then after all of that came just like being proud and like looking back and and seeing how how far i've come and, and calling my family and celebrating together um but but yeah it was it was just a, a dream come true you know i had i had been in in all the camps leading up to it, I uh, I thought I had a pretty good so Americano, so I was I was pretty confident in in me making that roster. But there were still those thoughts of like, what if, what if I don't, or maybe not. But um, just just to to get the list and know that I'm gonna be living my dream, you know, it's a nice feeling. Mm -hmm. I I feel like. With with the talent Colombia had, I think the expectation was was the final, um, getting to that, that final. But you personally, did you fulfill your expectations? I know, for me, man, like personally, I'm not going to comment on coaches' decisions, but there were there were times that you know I thought you would fit that midfield, especially when we were in possession, not doing anything with it. That like you would get more minutes. Did you feel like you um, meet your expectations for a tournament? You know, I, I went into the tournament the same way I went to Sud Americano. Um, just just knowing that I have to be a good teammate. Um, that was the most important thing. Uh, and be there whenever the team needed me, uh, whenever the coach felt like 
uh, I, I had the chance to, to make an impact. And, and that's what I, that's what I did. Um, you know, we have a lot of great players on, on the team and, and at the end of the day, um, the coaching decision is, is always difficult. Um, but I think that whenever I got called upon to, to go in and, and help the team or try to, try to change the game or close out the game, I, I feel like I, I did my best and, and I feel like I, I did pretty good for, for the time I got. Um, but yeah, I, I think everyone knew that we wanted to go further. We had the players to go further. Um, but I still think it was a great tournament from everyone and, and individually. Um, I'm, I'm just proud that I got to, to represent Colombia in that tournament and, and contribute to, to, you know, such a, such a great team. Yeah. I know you got to come in against Senegal, got your minutes. You guys were w losing one zero. Boom. You got, you got to make the assist. Uh, also in South Americana, we, we forgot to mention that the goal that got disallowed, that was like 15 passes. It was beautiful. Boom, yeah. boom. So I wanted to ask you, um, would you rather have a, that beautiful assist or just, you know, un golazo? Um, bro, I mean, I think everyone just wants to score a goal, <laughs> you know. Um, I'm not really the type of player that scores a lot of goals in a season. So I think I think just scoring a goal would would be really really nice to to get that feeling every once in a while. Claro, claro. Yeah, yeah describe to us that moment where like what was going through your head because that that ball needed to be inch perfect against Senegal, bro. Like like two, three feet a meter forward, it, like it's in the hands of the goalie. A meter back, like center backs would have gotten it. Like what what was going through your mind in that moment? Did you see that run from? From Oscar. Yeah, so I think there was like a weird clearance from Senegal. And so the first thing I did was like check in front of me to see how much space I had, if I had time to control it. Um, so I saw there was a guy in front of me. So I tried to control it uh, like oriental to the side so I could have more time. So once I controlled it, uh, the ball bounced and then I look and then I see Oscar is like coming back like on side. So, and you know, o Oscar and I think Hurtado was there too. Mm -hmm. And um, so I see, I see that little movement that he comes in. So I feel like at that time in the game, it was time to, you know, take risk. And, and I try to try to put it in his path. And thankfully, yeah, I mean, it was a great finish as well, but thankfully he, awesome. he was yeah. able to, to put it in the back of the net. Um, yeah, I was really happy that, that I got to help the team and contribute. Would you say that was the peak of your, your of your career so far, so far? Yeah, that's probably like the biggest thing I've done, assist in the World Cup. Like, oh, bro, why do you say it so casually? Like, I know, right? Like, no, like, like, like some, assisting some the, light, the, some light, right? Uh, like I'm that's telling you, the biggest thing I've done, like assist in the World Cup. You know, how in many, Argentina, in Argentina. <laughs> How many players like you know wish they could say that? Wow. So, I'm, I'm really happy. You know, I was I was really happy when when I saw the ball go in and know that I got an assist. So, uh -huh. I know there there's another player that was really happy too that you know immediately came up to you in the celebration, Devin. Yeah. Where he like he yeah you know, <laughs> he came straight at you and he whispered something in your ear. What did what did Devin say in that moment? He just was like, "Thank you, bro." <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and you know, I, I have a really good relationship with Devin. I had been with him in the U.S. as well, and and yeah, you know, we we talk about just like coming in, and making an impact, and and I think I think that game, um, I think that game was was a good moment for me to to try and help the team out, and and Devin had let me know when I subbed in, like he was telling me like, oh, this is like your game, this is your game. Um, so just to get that assist and, and yeah, he, he ran up to me and just said, thank you. Okay. Bro, bro. bro uh, how's the, how's the dynamic with like the dual nationals? Like obviously you're Colombian American and we got Devin who was, he's Colombian American and English. And then there's, um, uh, Kevin Alvarez, who, who was born in, 
in New York. And then there's Alexi, who's also, you know, from England. Yeah. How is that dynamic? Do you guys speak in English? Who do you get along with? Do you guys pick at each other? Yeah. No, I think I think we have a little a little group of Los Extranjeros. But um I think overall, like just the the team environment is probably one of the best environments I've been in. Everyone is so nice. Everyone like everyone is part of the group there. We've never felt like not included or or put to the side, you know. Everyone sees us as as Colombians because we have a love for Colombia and and obviously that was earned over time. Um, so, but yeah, I think Fernando, Fernando and Devin are, are my closest friends on, on the national team. My roommate is Fernando. Um, so, okay. so yeah, we have a, we have a little special bond, but you know, every, everyone in the team is, is close and, and makes us feel, feel included. Did, did you ever, do you ever feel like you were too like too Latino for the U S and then like kind of like too gringo for the, for Colombia or has everyone been very inclusive? No, I think, I think both, both national teams were, were really cool about it. I think U S even more just because U S is so used to having players that aren't really American. Um, so yeah, they were U S was at my camp. There's a lot of Hispanic players, a lot of players that from Europe, Um, but in Colombia, you know, if, if you, if you speak Spanish and you, you show that you, you're giving it all on the field, you know, I don't think it's, it's that hard to really get along with the guys, everyone, they're just great people. Do do you have like a nickname in, in the, in the Colombian camp? Like, I know like Colombians love to pick on like insecurities or any little like small detail they, they know about you. Like though, that's your nickname. Yeah. Uh, well, they, my official nickname, like let's say, like the formal nickname, is Casti. Just my last name, and there's a million Juans in Colombia. <laughs> and the non-formal one is Pelicortica. That was when obviously I had my long hair, um, <laughs> so they call me Pelicortica. And yeah, I mean, it's all it's all jokes, you know. Is that if, why you, if, you take, if you take anything to heart from a Colombian, oh, you're, no. you're going to... Si es papaya, si es papaya. Is that why you chopped it off? No, nah, no. Nah. I, I, I had been getting called Pelicortica since my first, my first camp. So I kept it going. And, and you know, I, always, I was planning on cutting it off and going back. But then I was like, I, I've always had long hair with Colombia. I'm going to finish the U20 World Cup with long hair and then after I'll I'll cut it. So that was the decision that was made. Um so ahorita la gente de chat, eh, Andy, Andrés, Luis, Sofía. Eh, eh, ah, qué duro, bro. Qué duro que, que esté representando Colombia, bro. Eh, talking a little bit more about like the future, uh, your time right now at Houston. Uh, are you happy at Houston, like with, with your playing time and you know uh, with the whole dynamic? Scoring goals, scoring goals. I saw you score goals last weekend. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm Houston is my home. I have my family here with me, and and I really I have my friends here, and and yeah, that brings me brings me a lot of happiness. I think overall, uh, I I want to have more minutes with the first team. I think that's everyone's goal, and. And so far, I haven't uh, been able to to get that, but you know, I'm I'm still working hard with with the second team with the minutes I get, and I have I have great players in in front of me um, on the on the first team in the midfield. So I think it's just trying to learn from them and and working as hard as I can to to just get better and and slowly start proving myself and and earning those minutes. But I think overall, happiness isn't just just from soccer. Um, so I have, I have my family here. I have my friends here and, and they always, they're always supportive and they bring me a lot of joy. Bro, cualquier cosa, you know, here in Atlanta, we desperately, desperately need an eight, bro. Oh, yeah, man. Yo, we need an eight. And I our need a six. Love, they, box love box, play, everything. they love to play young, young players on him. That's something to think about, bro. <laughs> Turn it out hey. there, bro. Turn it up. <laughs> where, where do you... 
see yourself like in the next three, five years? Um, do you see yourself like still at Houston, maybe in another team in MLS? Um, maybe make the jump over to to the old continent? I mean, I, I, I really couldn't tell you. Just I, I have no idea where I'm going to be. You know, right now I'm, I'm still under contract at Houston. So I'm, I'm focused on, on this year, finishing this year off strong. But, but who knows, you know, I, I'm really, I really want to get first division games. Um, I feel like it's time for me to start getting that type of experience. And if that's here or if that's somewhere else, you know, I'm, I'm just looking to, to better, better my game, uh, better myself as a player and, and keep developing. So I, I don't know wherever wherever God takes me is is where I will be and and hopefully hopefully it's in Houston because uh, you know I, I grew up here this is my this is my home this is my home city I I love representing Houston but if if it's not here and God has plans for me to be somewhere else then then it'll be somewhere else but I'm I'm confident in in myself and and what I can do and. And I know that whoever, wherever I get an opportunity, I'll, I'm going to make the most out of it. And, and God will take me places that, that you know, I, I couldn't imagine. Oh, bro. Que respuesta. Sí, I'm bro. Like, same, bro. We got to make that right. clip. Bro. We'll bro, send it to you, bro. We'll send it to you. We'll years of experience. <laughs> <laughs> no, bro, with, that yeah. said, with, with that being said, we're going to give you, we, we're going to throw at you some lightning round with the parceros questions. Um, yeah. that the years of experience and that goes out the window, bro. You gotta you gotta respond like that. Y, okay. And we're gonna start out with Deportivo Cali. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, your your favorite Colombian soda. Manzana. Manzana Pozón. Favorite Colombian food. Arepas. Oh, I just had one. Colombian word. Mm -hmm. Omi. Oh, Ay, Buñuelo o pan de oro? Buñuelo. Goal in extra time or winning PKs? Yeah, goal in extra time. Something you do before every game? Call my parents. Mm. We're in a car, run away to the party, and we give you the ox cord. You got to bring up the vibes. What song? I think Una Noche in Medellin. Oh, hey, he passed the vibes. I want to know what Juan is listening to. What are your top artists? I listen to everything. I like Drake, um, but I think this these past few months I've been listening to a lot of Spanish music, like Bad Bunny, uh, Faith, uh, yeah, you know, Blessed. Just got Did, did, uh, you, like, did you ever did you ever get on the ox you know with the boys in Colombia like in Argentina? Did you nah, ever get on the ox? Nah, bro. That, <laughs> they don't pass it. They don't pass it. Not, not hands, bro. No. They would never pero, give pero, that. It, it's puro salsa choque, no? Yeah. Or reggaeton. Nah. Dave, look, we, we'll give you the ox, man. We'll give you the ox. See, speaking of artists, though, you know in Colombia they got the Feria de Cali? Well, let's say you're throwing La Feria de Juan Castilla and you get to pick three artists. Who do you bring? Uh, I think Bad Bunny. If it's in Colombia, I wouldn't be bring Drake, but I would. No, hey man, he went. He went to, to one of those. You know, who do you win? Bad Bunny, Drake. Bad Bunny, Drake. And I'm I'm a big Twenty One Savage fan. Twenty One, Yo, I straight from Atlanta, bro. I'm saying, bro. Hey, yo, another reason, bro. I'm not. You got I'm it. Just <laughs> throwing it out there. You heard it here first. Parcero's take, not a slang. And <laughs> last one, bro. Hobbies outside of the beautiful game. What else you be doing? Uh, how's what? Hobbies, hobbies outside of the game, like what, like what are you into? Um, bro, honestly, I just hang out with my friends, play video games. Uh, you know, I I got into reading this past these past few years. Okay, okay, um, wow. But yo, his girl watching. Yo, his girls. He someone gotta be watching, bro. <laughs> yo, his bro. girls watching. He's like he, gonna say, I love going to church. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> he goes to church i love reading man <laughs> long walk uh, i mean bro it's not i don't really it's just really soccer for me and the rest is is just spending time with the fan with the boys uh, having fun 
No, nah, makes sense. Uh, bro, no, muchísimas gracias, bro. Thank you so much for, sí. for hopping on, man. It was fun having you. I know a lot of people had fun in the, in the chat. Um, ah, bro, éxitos in, in, your, in your career, bro. We're, we're always rooting for you, always since day one. Literally, the day you sign a contract, we put it, we put it to you like, oh, like Juan Castilla, uh, youngest. We keep an eye, you know. We keep an and, eye. Uh, and then seeing you represent Colombia, like, it's dope, man. It's dope, though, because it represents a lot of us Colombian Americans. And it's dope to see you out there. And, bro, you got our whole our whole community room for you. But now, bro, thank you so much for, yeah. for hopping on, man. No, thank you guys for, for having me. I, I had a good time. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad I get to represent a lot of the Colombian Americans. And I'm glad we got to have this have this talk and re- have you guys have your guys followers see this and and see the the inside scoop about Colombia and just about MLS as well. So for yeah, sure, man. Yeah. Great insight. Yeah. Hopefully next time you get on the Ox, man, show them some Drake. You know what I mean? Hey, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. Gracias. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, please like and subscribe. Follow us on las redes sociales. Muchachos, muchas gracias. Another episode of Parceros Take. Los dos parceros. Los dos parceros.